Hi, let's go over how to make HDRP2 shader using shader graph only. Um, since we are gonna make our own shadow, I'm going to make it as Omni Shader. HDRP Omni Shader. I'm gonna name it Tune. Double click, open it up. Okay, first I need light direction and normal vector. I want to know the relationship between the light direction and surface normal, so I'm going to use the dot product. We actually need to negate this light direction because we want to know the direction of the light from the surface to the light source, not vice versa. When we compare these two vectors using dot node, the output value will be ranged from negative 1 to 1. If it's perpendicular, it will give it a 0. So this star side is negative 1, and this side is positive 1. And actually, I want to make this value 0 to 1 because we're going to use it as a coordinate for the shadow texture. So we can do that by math, but here I'm going to use the remap node to be more intuitive. So negative 1 to 0 to 1. We remap it and then we're, we're going to plug that into vector 2 node. I'm going to leave the y value as 0 because you're only going to use the x value. And we're going to plug that into uv coordinate, uv. So we're going to only use the x value I'm gonna make it as a property and it's going to be our shadow texture so I prepared this texture with the Photoshop then I'm gonna select my texture Right now, we are only sampling here because the y value is 0. We're only sampling here. But if we make the y value as a slider, I'm changing it to slider. And I scroll up and down, we can now see I'm sampling upper part of the texture. Bottom part, upper part. Okay, now we have the shadow for the main texture. We're gonna need another 2D. And name this main texture. Okay, now I can simply multiply these two texture and then plug into base color. And now we have shadow using shadow texture. I'm gonna put this over here. All right, now instead of using texture file, we're gonna use the gradient node. So as our time value goes from 0 to 1, we're sampling from this gradient node. And then I'm going to flip it. You can play around and see what you need. You can make it um, sharp. You can add a color like this. And then make it sharp like this. Yeah. And then you're gonna use this as a shadow texture and then plug that into base. Okay, the last method that we're gonna try is to use smooth stem node. Here we don't need to remap the value, so I'm just going to plug 
this into smooth stem node. So what this node does is um, whatever value we put in, if the value is in between these two value, min and max, it's going to smoothly blend it out in between. So, um, so if I change the min value to the smaller number, it will start to blend out early. Also, notice how when I increase the max value, it covers more range because it tells until when we stop blending. So it can be used as a smoothness and this can be used as the range. So I'm going to make these as a property. And here, smoothness. Actually, you can see some noise in the line. That's because we have the same value for a min and max. So make sure we put a little bit higher number value here so then it can be flat. We are going to make these two as a slider. Okay, so notice how when I increase the range, it gets flipped like this. What I want is as I increase the min value, I also want to increase the end point. So I, what I can do is to add these two together and set it as a max value. And now we don't have the problem anymore. Um, then let's say I want to add a color property so I can change the color of the shadow. We can simply do it like this. We can try this and it's not what we want. So actually, um, we need to get the shadow part only and change the color. In order to do that, we can use the one minus node and it's gonna flip it. And then we're gonna do this. And then we can just add our shadow part and the original smooth stem node. And then plug that into here. So then we can change our shadow color. But now let's say I want to make a shadow just like here. I want to make two shadow like we did with the texture that I can customize. What we can do is using the lerp node. Actually, um, let's first copy and paste this one. And Okay, lerp node. What this node does is from the output value from the smooth stem node, which is 0 to 1, we are putting that as an input and tells how much we want to blend these two values out, A and B. So if it's 0, it will return A. If this value is 1, it will return B. So if this value is 0 0.5, it will return half and half mix. Okay, actually I need to make it make a new node. Okay, and then make a two color node here. And I'm going to change the B value, which is the bright part, and change to gray. And I'm planning to use this black and gray color as my shadow for this part. So what I can do is use another lerp node and plug that into A part and smooth step over here. So that as the value from the smooth step node get closer to zero, it will be this black and gray color. Close to one, 
it will just return white. So uh, you can change this value and play around. I'm gonna set it as a slider also. Even if we increase the value all the way up, it's not going to change the bright side because we are only controlling the zero part. We already put the one value here, white part, to the B port. So if this value is close to one, it will always be white. And now we are only controlling this part. But here, we can change fully because we are literally changing the mapping of where the zero and where is one from this smooth stem node we we're inputting into here i'm gonna make this two as a property and then name it shadow color okay then i'm gonna multiply it with main texture and then plug into base color I'll probably make another video covering the rim lighting and specular highlight. I hope this was helpful. Okay, bye bye.